today's episode of Fearless Chicks with Kari Heller. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm kicking off the holiday season. Got my red sweater on. Loving <laughs> it. It's very cold here today. So I'm I'm ready. <laughs> it's so nice to have like be able to wear it too and just be like, yes, I'm embracing the holidays are here now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> for sure. Um, okay. So last week we talked, we finished talking a little bit uh, more about um, complimenting and acknowledging others' positive attributes. And we talked about giving compliments. And then I was noticed, like, my cousin gave um, a challenge to give, like, five compliments a day. And then so you and I kind of thought that was a nice challenge. But did you want to discuss a little our thoughts about that, though? Yeah, um, I think that's a great idea, too. But then I think we have to be careful on making sure that they stay sincere. Like, um, I think it's a great habit to get into. And I don't think you would look, have to look very far to find them. I just feel like, you know, you want to still make sure that it's something that's genuine, not just like out of habit, like you don't even know you're saying it. So I think, I mean, it's a great idea and I'm going to start doing it. I agree with you. I, I really like the idea too. And I think sometimes people could slip into the being insincere, just like, oh, I got to get my five compliments in. But mm-hmm. there's so many opportunities in any given day to give people, different mm-hmm. people a compliment you know, just expression of small things. Yeah. Like I was saying, I was driving through the McDonald's uh, drive through and the lady who gave me a coffee had super cool nails. I'm like, I love your nails. And yeah. it was very sincere and it wasn't anything, you know, mm-hmm. major. So I think right. we'll implement that maybe as part of our strategies. I agree. So what, like if we recap, it's like, how are you doing on um, talking to yourself in a positive way? How are you doing on being the first to compliment? Now we're going to add in like do five compliments a day to someone. And like I said, I don't think it's hard to, to find them. It's just, it's getting in the habit of it having coming out of your mouth instead of just thinking it. And then, um, I thought, um, and we discussed it a little bit, um, earlier is that, um, you know, sometimes I challenge myself like, Oh, that girl has, I mean, she has a really cute hairstyle and it's blue. Now, does that sway you away from complimenting her or does that make you more want to compliment her? Because I think it's it really shows your true self and how you represent yourself on the outer and and your physical. And so I challenge myself to say, hey, I love your hair. And it's hard, too, because like I think some people might think you're sarcastic. It's like if you see someone running, it's on the same line. It's like if you see someone running and you can tell they're struggling and you just want to yell out, go. But, you know, they might think, oh, that was someone sarcastic, like making fun of me. So it's a it's a fine balance that we have to, you know, try and try and accomplish. accomplish. Yeah. How do we get to the point too, like where someone a compliment, compliment is taken as like, oh, are they being insincere or are they not? You know, I know and, it's unfair. When we were talking earlier, you made a good point too. When we were talking about like complimenting blue hair and that, and sometimes like it, we revert to that judgment of like, oh, they have their hair blue because they want attention, mm-hmm. as opposed to kind of like you said, an expression of who they are, and the, yep. and to compliment that because it's an expression of who they are. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So there's the challenges. Let's keep them going. It's not just, you know, hey, this is the week that you want to, you know, start to compliment, be the first one to compliment or do your five. Like get in the habit of doing all those things. You can't go wrong by talking positively about yourself to yourself. I agree. You're right. It's not like, oh, okay, I did that challenge. Yep. I'm positive myself. Oh, I complimented right. someone. It's like we're kind of trying to build a new way of looking at um, interacting, especially with other, raising other women up. Maybe that's what it is. Totally. Including yep. yourself. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So that, that leads to our discussion. I loved you had came up with this topic, and I really love it. Um, do women um, apologize too much? And yeah. so why don't you dive into your thoughts on that first? So, you know, like I know we're all busy. Like there's so many things where I feel like we can have that. We can have some statements in life be an unspoken statement, such as I'm so busy. You know what? It doesn't do it anymore. We're all busy. And it might be busy in different ways. Some people can handle more things than others. Um, And so, like, you can cut out the energy, like, take away that energy that you're wasting on apologizing for whatever it is and giving the reason why. And case in point is someone um, texted me last night. And it wasn't even 24 hours that I had texted her. And she said, I'm so sorry it took me so long to reply. It's been such a crazy day. I mean, all of that could have been erased. 
like, mm -hmm. hey, thanks for reaching out. Like, this is my answer. Or, you know, however, however we um, approach that. But I think our apologies, um, we don't need them. And I constantly am thinking, okay, this might be a situation where I would apologize, but I'm going to try to put uh, a, a different word in there instead of I'm sorry. You know, like that doesn't, that night really doesn't work for me. And it, it's hard to explain. Like, what, what do you think? Like, how do you explain it? I wonder, like, when you, especially when you said that, like, I'm sorry, I can't make it. Like, I think it's um, that sometimes we're trying to make everyone happy. Yeah, and so you're, when you definitely. can't make someone happy, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's not, yeah. And it's not that, you know, they don't even expect it. Like if your friend just got back to you and said, here's the information you're looking for without the apology. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were upset, that would have been on you. Like, because totally. you had expectations of her mm -hmm. you know, and that that shouldn't have been met. Yeah. Um, let's see. And then, so, then so, so, apologizes every time someone's happy and displeased. Yeah, things that we don't, oh, that's such a good point too, like apologizing over things we have no control over. Definitely. And you then know. at that same time, let's try and figure out like, is that meaning of I'm sorry or apologizing, losing, getting lost? Mm -hmm. And what are the situations where you genuinely need and really want to ask for forgiveness? Because I'm sorry means that you want forgiveness from someone. Um, you make a so, good point. Yeah. I told you, I looked into the science of apology yeah. and there was yeah. six, or six points to make a sincere apology. And like one of them was forgiveness. So it's, these were the six, um, express, express regret. Mm -hmm. So that'd be the, oh, I'm sorry. An explanation of went wrong. Uh, acknowledgement of responsibility. Declaration of uh, repentance, which again, that'd be like not doing it again. Um, mm -hmm. Offer to repair and request of forgiveness. And so like, if we would take your example about texting and getting your information, like the, so on so many examples that would fall through, like she didn't need forgiveness from you. Right. She didn't need to repair anything. Right. She didn't need to like repent and say, I'll never take this long again. Right. Right. <laughs> um, explanation of, you know, she's, but I think that's the other thing This explanation of what went wrong in her mind. Maybe, mm -hmm something was wrong, but those are the expectations of us trying to please other people, I think. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I mean, you hit it right on the head. And mm -hmm. I, I totally feel that um, there are genuine things that you really need to ask for forgiveness for. We are human beings who will constantly disappoint one another. And there's different levels of that. Some things I think that are appropriate to ask for forgiveness or say you're sorry, but there's others where, you know, it's kind of like you don't, you kind of don't really care about how busy your day was. Even if it took her two or three days, that wouldn't have bothered me. And I know that that's different for a lot of people. So you can't bunch it up into one ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm, Melissa here makes a point too. Like, instead of saying, I'm sorry, say, please forgive me. Because then you really yeah. probably clarifying, does this situation require me to be forgiven? That's a great point, Melissa. I yeah. love that. And then, you know, so then it, it kind of makes you stop and think, is it an I'm sorry or is it a, a please ask for, you know, I, I need your forgiveness or I'd like to ask for your forgiveness, yeah. which also taps into when you do ask someone for forgiveness about something that's deep and hurtful or um, needs mm -hmm. repentance or whatever. It's up to that other person to forgive. That's a whole nother topic, right? Yeah, that is. Because people hold grudges and, you know, for years, over things that are misunderstandings or things, you know, that are really, you can chalk up to being a human being. It was something yeah. that was wrong was said, you know, we don't know what's going on in other people's lives. So right. another topic. No, yeah. To accept. Um, and I think when you were talking, one thing, when you were saying made me think like, I sometimes we throw an apology out. It's more like a still like me, please. Like, please yeah. don't be mad at me. Please still like me. That kind of, you know, yeah. or like when we yeah. ask somebody to do something for us, like, I'm sorry, but can you please just say, can you please? Yeah. And in a nice yeah. way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we were talking, I both having sons, I find men and boys to be so different about this. Yeah. And I was driving my, I was driving my son home from a football game with a bunch of his friends and he got really mad at one of his friends for like a legitimate reason. And it was so different than if I had a car full of girls. He's like in front of all of his friends said, 
I'll use a fake name, Bob, why did you do that? I was so mad. It basically, I'm like, I think sometimes guys are really tuned in to how to um, deal with conflict in a, you know, in a, when there's communicating with it. Yeah. And his yeah. friend, like, I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, I think I said, you should apologize. Or, like, or like, maybe you just need to be like, send him a nice text afterward. He's like, no, he was mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's wow. so much more direct. Yeah. So much more direct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to look up here. I looked up a few other notes on our um, topic here. Um, well, oh, it's kind of the other thing that I just wanted to share was it's kind of like a Trojan horse of being genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes when you're like mad at somebody or, you know, like, oh, I'm sorry, but blah, blah, blah. I'm mm-hmm. just in it. And it's completely falls in our categories of apologies because you're not taking the blame. You're putting it on you. Like, um, I'm sorry you were late today, but Carrie was putting on her makeup, which was actually dumb of her. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it's so passive aggressive. So I was like mm-hmm. fake genuine to you guys. Oh, I'm sorry we're late. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, <clears throat> um, anyways, yeah. so we have a good, tough wrap up question, which I'm not even prepared for an answer yet. Sure. So <laughs> I... I, since we're talking about this, um, I thought it would be good, you know, we're kicking off the holiday season. We're starting to think about what we're thankful for. You're starting to see on Facebook people doing thankful for and having pictures. Um, but what are you most thankful for about yourself? Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm thankful for myself that I'm, have the view of life uh, that it glass is mostly a half full. And even when I'm going through tough times, I think I really see like, this is going to get better. You know, like in all aspects, like, you know, like some people look back and like, Oh, high school was my best time ever or college. And I'm really like my life, whenever a point I'm in, I'm like, this is my best point. Mm-hmm. And now when I'm in a difficult situation, you know, like going to the door, so I don't know if I always said it was my best point, but I think I wouldn't go back either. So I guess yeah. that's what I'm thinking that I can look forward and be really happy in the now. Awesome. How about my, my, mine is um, I'm really willing, and I don't find this to be true with a lot of people, especially when they're on the other side of me is, or in general with another person, is I'm willing to talk about things. Um, mm-hmm. Even if they're hard topics or, you know, you're crying in the midst of it or someone's been hurt and you're just t- trying to work it out. I'm willing to sit down and have a face-to-face conversation. And I'm thankful that I am. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. It's hard. And um, taking the time, the emotional energy, but sitting down and talking something out to have it be understood. Sometimes I'm a little bit overboard and, I be, and I'm a little bit analytic and I really want to try and validate my point. And that's a past life issue for me that I really want to be validated and heard. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, I just really feel like as I age and as I go through life experience, I really feel like I have a calm outlook on life. And because we are all human and we are going to disappoint one another, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be disappointed. So you kind of like you just evolve into this person where it's like, okay, you know, let's deal with that or um, just... It seems like, too, like, I can really tell with you that you, when you talk to, sometimes when people want to talk, it's very passive aggressive, and you're just very open to, like, like, let's deal with this, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, we have one. I think Melissa, I'm thankful, is, yeah, that's a tough one. That's what she said. I thought she had an answer. So we're going to challenge everyone this week to think over what you're thankful about yourself. I think it's an excellent question, Kari. I'm so glad that you thought of it. Yeah. And I mean, this whole, like these whole um, shows that we've been doing is like bettering yourself and piling one thing on top of another to, to better, be a better person and be better about relationships and be healthy emotionally. And I think they all tie in together. So when you compile all of them, it really, it's really gratifying to see like your attitude change, your thoughts change, your ways that you talk to people change, all that. And I think, like, when you were saying that, I'm like, we need to write these up. And, like, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of like an affirmation or way to live your life. And the fact is, like, um, if it starts to become a habit, which is good, because when you do fall down yeah. and not it is, like, either self-judgment or not being kind to others, but it, it becomes a reflex, reflection or 
how's the right way to say it? But you reflect back to it. You know, you yeah. bounce back to this behavior once you yeah. keep building on it. Yeah. So. Okay. And so what are we talking about next week? I think we want to, we need to dive into healthy holidays. Um, and I'm not talking about just eating. I'm talking about emotional. Like sometimes this, I mean, often, I shouldn't even say sometimes, this time of year is not the greatest time of year for everybody. So mm -hmm. I thought we would talk about like um, stress reduction or like doing what's right for you, not what the family expects, um, you know, indulging, but being, you know, mindful of what you're doing because you don't want to pay for it in January, like all that kind of stuff all wrapped into one. And when you say um, that, that means relationships too. Oh, right? totally. Because you can pay for it in totally. relationships in January. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. Like, so that'll be fun. I mean, that might be a two weeker, I think. I think it will be a two weeker. You know, I just want to, um, th I'm just tell you first of all, I'm so grateful that we're doing this together. And Again, this is another example. We're kind of social media. Like we reached out to each other. I think you commented yeah. on one of my shows, and I'm like, yeah, I'd love to have her. I'm yeah. really grateful. I think you bring such a great energy and thoughtfulness. So I'm so excited about <laughs> Thank our you. I'm thankful too. Yeah, awesome. Okay, well, you guys, see you guys next week. <laughs>